Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use attribute selectors to format elements based on their attributes. Okay, so I've got a page set up, and um, on my code editor, nothing fancy to look at. So I want to talk about attribute selectors. These come in really handy with form elements. So for instance, I could have a form element, and I'll do a type equals text here. And let me go ahead and do a, a couple of these. So I've got four text boxes. Basically, that's a form element text box. And for some of them, I will put in the required attribute. So the required attribute is a singleton attribute. There's no value associated with it. So I've got required. So what I can do now is in my style sheet, I can look, I'm going to format input tags, but I'm going to use a square brackets and required. And specifically, oops, I have to spell that properly. Specifically, I'm going to say that these are going to have border three picks solid red as opposed to my normal inputs without an attribute selector these might be border three picks solid gray so my standard input elements are going to have a gray border but my required input elements are going to have a red border save that head over to the browser and refresh and there we go required text boxes have that red border Hey, in this uh, demo file that I'm using, if you look in the video description, you'll find a link to it so you can check out the source code. Okay, so let's go a step further with this. On my code editor, excellent, I can style by um, the attribute. Well, I'm going to change this text to a password. Now, if I just look at this on my browser, that change isn't going to register anything like that. That's the password box right there put them side by side. So the password box is the last one. So this time I don't want to just look at the attribute, but I want to look at the value of the attribute. So once again, I do an input square bracket. And this time type is the attribute equals password. And for this one, I'll just do a uh, background color of a light shade of yellow. So now that password box gets different formatting. The attribute selector includes not just the attribute, but the value associated with the attribute. Excellent. Now the next couple of examples, I want to be very precise. I want to look at the value of a hyper-reference attribute. I want to look to see where a hyperlink is going. And I'm going to look specifically at the beginning of the hyperlink or the end of the hyperlink. Now, just before I started the recording, I went and grabbed a couple of uh, PNG icons here. I've got one over here saved on my desktop for a padlock and another one for a PDF file. So I'm going to create a couple of hyperlinks. Let's do an old horizontal, uh, old fashioned horizontal rule there. I'm going to have a uh, hyperlink that goes to um, an HTTPS site. And then I'll have another one that goes to um, just want to have it end with a PDF file. Excellent. So I've got these two hyperlinks. Now, based on the addresses, based on the value of the href beginning with an HTTPS, I want to show the little padlock icon next to the hyperlink. And based on the web address ending in a PDF, then I want to show the little PDF icon next to the hyperlink. So, got the hyperlinks ready to go. Let me actually just do a couple break tags here, put these on different lines. Let's go to the CSS. So for the styling, not terribly different than what we have before, just a few more declarations involved. So the first one's going to be A for anchor, and then I'm going to do my square brackets. It's going to be href caret equals HTTPS. So now I can start to put in the specific styling for a hyper reference that begins with HTTPS. And I will be using a background image and my image is lock url lock.png. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple other things while I'm here. There we go. So a background repeat, no repeat, background size, 16 pixels. Let's see how this is looking. Head over to my browser and refresh. And I can see I've got that little padlock icon hidden behind the text. Let me zoom in a bit more so you can really see that. However, the text is overlapping it. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a padding left on the text. And I guess about 20 pixels should take care of it. 
refresh there we go and if we wanted to we could do a little uh, background position I'm gonna do XY will be 0% but for the um, top and bottom well, I could use pixels there for the top and bottom maybe I'll knock it down four pixels so just moves that little lock it's actually a little bit too much excellent so HTTPS addresses have the little padlock now using a very similar technique I'm going to create another CSS rule now instead of looking for the beginning of the value I'm going to use a dollar sign and look for the end of the value and instead of HTTPS it's going to be a dot PDF I'm looking for a hyper reference attribute that ends with a dot PDF instead of my lock picture I've got my PDF PNG file otherwise everything's the same background no repeat small background size padding left to make sure the text clears the icon background position is the same control s to save head on over to the browser and refresh and there we go so now I'm gonna have a PDF icon next to any hyperlink that ends with a PDF file and a padlock icon next to any hyperlink that begins with an HTTPS protocol mm -hmm.